How did my fishing year start? A uh, bit of a slow start. I didn't do any piking in, in the start of the year, which I normally do. So I didn't really start doing any fishing until I'd say around March. I started to go after the carp again. Um, went down to the lock, had a couple of fish on the lock. Again, I only got sort of one night down there. So, But on average, I get between three and five fish on each trip that I make. So I'm happy enough with that. Um, the biggest down there this year was 16.9. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good start to the season. What's my favourite carp bait? Um, well, I have to say that this, the sticky krill, I, I, I just use it all the time now because it, anywhere I've been, it's worked. It's, it's got me so many results and not only for carp, but for other species as well. So yeah, I have to say the sticky krill. What other carp venues have I fished? Well, I fished our, our local club water um, and I hammered that this year. Like I gave it a, a, a lot of work. And I had something like seven sessions before I got my first carp out of it. You know, I had really, some really good fish before that, you know, hybrids and rod and so forth. A few, few tench as well, some really nice tench. But um, yeah, that, that was, and that was that produced my new Irish PB, which was a twenty-two and a half pound common again on the sticky krill. So it's good, good result at the end of it, John. How was my personal my PB tench from club water? My PB tench from the club water was five pound. Um, I had it from four, I had a four and a quarter, four and a half, and a five in one session. And again, got them all on, on 15 mil boilies, which was surprising. But um, yeah, the, and beautiful fish, I have to say, really, really nice fish. Uh, my personal best rod, my personal best rod was two and a half pound, again, on the club water. And again, I caught that on, on uh, a 15 mil boilie, which was really surprising. But because I, I had a few hybrids up to sort of two and a half pound at that stage. And then I thought I had another hybrid, but uh, you can imagine the surprise when I took in a two and a half pound rod, it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, uh, to, to try and get away from the, the hybrids and the, the tench and the rod, to try and you know go after the targeted species, the carp, I decided to start using double toygonal. And funny enough, that produced an absolutely fantastic seven pound nine ounce bream. Uh, or sorry, seven pound, exactly seven pound bream. We thought it was a hybrid at first, and we, we you know, we, we pondered over it for a few days, but then we settled on it that it was a just a beautiful bream. And still no carp, but um, yeah, great fishing all the same. Uh, the, yeah, what led up to the my, my PB Irish fish, the, the leg record for the club water. I fish, as I say, from Saturday into Sunday. I normally go down after work on Saturday evening. I, set up as quick as I can and then fish into the Sunday and, and fish as long as I can Sunday before it gets too dark. Um, it was a strange day because I, I had the rods out and everything was fine and then a signet picked up one of my baits and hooked itself. So I had to reel that in, unhook the signet, get battered by the parents while I was doing it, release the board and then I set up the bait again. Now you know, as you can imagine I was peed off, I hadn't got much time left in the day, it was around two o'clock and I Decided just fresh bait, everything else, but instead of putting the rod back where it originally was, I there's a small little island on the lake, and I said I'll pull it up behind the island, just a bit deeper water, get away from the boards and, and the swans, and see what happens. As I said, it was about two o'clock, and about quarter past three, the rod screamed off. Beautiful mirror, sorry, beautiful common, absolutely cracking fish, and uh, yeah, but definitely my, my best Irish carp. And as I say, a new leg record for the for the venue. This joke. Oh my God! Look at you. Oh man! Look at that. Twenty-two and a half pounds of pure muscle. What a beauty. Oh yes. Who's a happy camper? Oh. Now let's get you. Back in the water, baby. Uh, the bait I used, as I say, I love the krill, and it was actually caught on krill. Um, krill 15 mil boilie, shelf life. Um, I don't tend to use the, the freezers, I just tend to use the shelf life because I'm only doing overnight sessions. And um, yeah, and all I done was loose fed about five boilies on top using a, a catapult. I just put about five boilies on top of it after I cast it out, and then happy days. It screamed. The tackle I use, yeah, well, I'm, uh, anyone that knows me will know I'm a tackle tart. And uh, in the last year, I've got myself a couple of sets of free spirit rods, the high SFs. Um, I have a set of two and a half customs, and I have a set in 12 foots, and I have a set of 13 foot 
three and a halfs custom. I was using the two and a halfs on that venue on the on the club water, but I found them that the water the water is very snaggy. There's a lot of weed in it, and they just didn't they just weren't powerful enough. So I start, I went back to using the three and a halfs up there, and yeah, lucky I did because when I hit that common, it, it dragged me into the weed and put me put it, the, the rod had the had the backbone to be able to to play it out with no problems, you know. So yeah, free spirit, and then the the rods are the, the rods I married up with a set of. Um, the magnesiums, the, the Shimano uh, te magnesium 12,000s. I have to say, if, if you can afford them, they're just the ultimate real. There's nothing out there even comes close to them. They're absolutely amazing. Line, I, I like the, the Daiwa um, ST. It's just a line that does everything I needed to do. I use it for my pike fishing as well as for my carp fishing. I, I'm trying other lines at the moment, such as the, um, the Fox, and again, that, that's working out well for me also, but it'll, it'll take a while for me to go away from the ST, I think. Who or what has influenced me in my fishing for, for, for this year? I have to say, when, when I went to the UK um, and fished alongside Rob Coleman for a few days, the, the guy is just a wealth of information. He's, he, you know, he's, he's just a carp catching machine. But, He's, he keeps things so simple, and simple is always good. And, and the basics, people tend to forget the basics, and I'm, I'm no different when it comes to that sort of stuff. But the best thing for me, one of the best things I learned this year was to use the measuring sticks, the marker sticks. It, it increases your accuracy no end. I mean, to be able to land your, your, your bait in, in the, you know, on the same spot every time, it, it's bound to increase your, your, your accuracy. And it, we proved that in the UK, because... Uh, the lake we were on at the time didn't fish well, at, you know, for the whole week. But yeah, we had eight fish between us, and um, yeah, it, it, simple little things like that. And listening to people like Rob, who have a wealth of experience and 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 following up on what they do. And, and another thing that Rob showed me how to set up and use was his spam setup, and it just went from backbreaking walk spamming to a pleasure spamming. Basically, that was that was the difference by using the the. the the equipment that he recommended as opposed to what we all just assume is the is the proper stuff and um, you know braid, or braid stiff rods heavy spawns all this sort of stuff but uh the free spirit of spawn rod the 5500 ultegra eight pound mono going straight to an eight to forty pound shock leader and you could drop it in a bucket at 100 yards it, it's just amazing accuracy so things like that made a massive difference to my fishing up the year i have to say and and people like rob people like jerry uh, heaps and um, people like you know people that are out there all the time that are constantly doing this type of fishing like as i said before carp fishing specimen carp fishing is, is, is still new to me and i'm enjoying every second of it though, i have to say but again with the, with the, the help of people that have the, the wealth of knowledge behind them to give me the advice. Uh, yeah, my UK trip. Well, I decided I wanted a, week, a week's holiday fishing, which I've never done and I've always said I wanted to do. So I got my brother-in-law, Christy, uh, myself, and we headed over to Linear Fisheries in, in Oxford. And we fished Oxley's Lake. Now, I have to say, Oxley's Lake, absolutely beautiful. Rob Coleman again recommended it. He met us there for the, and he stayed with us for the first two and a half, three days. Um, we were fishing a three peg swim, so we were all close together and we were all learning off each other, if you like, and fishing to an island. And I have to say, it was actually probably one of the best fishing trips, well, it was without a doubt, the best fishing trip I've ever had and very memorable.
fishing well and we, we knew that from listening to the locals and it's, a, it's, it's one of these lakes where apparently you have to spot or spawn constantly and constantly to feed it when it is fishing but that week it was the weather everything was against us you know it was really sunny weather but uh, an easterly wind but and it was it was funny it was beautiful fish were moving all over the place but yet they just weren't getting the head down so we done what we, we, we just went out with a different approach we went out with um single boilie again using the krill and loose boilies over the top instead of doing too much spawning at the start like um we done a bit of spawning during the week then to try and because we thought they might be coming back on but then we discovered now go back with the loose feed and then we started getting results again uh, my, I, I had actually two PBs. I had a 33 pound 10 ounce mirror, which just blew me away. And look, well, lucky for me, I had that the first morning after I arrived. I also had a 24 and a half pound mirror, which again was a beautiful fish. And I won't say the highlight because they were all beautiful fish, but I had a beautiful seven pound 10 ounce tench. And that was just the icing on the cake for me for the weekend. Christy then had four fish and Rob had one fish. So that was our eight fish for the week. And uh, Christy had some lovely mirrors and comments. And we, we just had a great week. It was really, really nice week of, of fishing. Yeah, um, the club water, we have, the club water that, we're, that I'm in and the, the, all my close friends are in is, um, it's, it's, it's very young water, put it that way. When, with regards to the amount of anglers that are hitting it are, are more to the point the amount of work and stuff that's been done on the lake to make it you know more accessible and so forth now we do an awful lot of, of work on the on the lakes on the lake you know and we're doing more and more every chance we get as a group we're, we sort of believe in you, you get out of something what you put into it and we, we're firm believers that you know you have to put work time and money into these venues or into your own club or whatever it may be to get anything back out of it worthwhile and yeah we're, we're starting to see the fruits of our labour now on this lake um, next year now will be a totally new season for us after the work we have done we've put in new stands we've uh, we've done a lot of work parties taking heavy shrub and heavy snags out of the water not all of them mind we, we want a few snags there but we've taken most of the, the big stuff out and um, yeah, we're, we're, we're more confident now for next year that it's going to be some nice and really nice fish coming out of it. Since we set up the angling in general, like I'm, I'm very happy with the way the whole system has gone. I mean, with the, the, the stock range we've built up, the, the customer base we've built up. I mean, we have so many loyal customers now. And, you know, a loyal customer is everything to any retail business. Um, but, but we have some exclusive products such as Free Spirit and Tasca and, you know, Oxbox. There's so many products there that we have that, you know, again, we didn't scream looking for these exclusive um, the deals. We, they, they were offered to us, probably due to the fact that the, the amount of social media that we do with the, with the, web, with the, the company itself, with the website, our, our Facebook, um, our YouTube channel. I mean, the YouTube channel is phenomenal. It's... We have 160 plus videos now at the moment and still growing. The, the, the social media all around, Google Plus and Twitter, you know, we're, we're pushing more and more of that now. So more and more people are, are being made aware of, of main Irish angling, basically. The, at the moment, we're just about to put in the new mezzanine floor, which will double the floor space that we already have because we're covering the whole building. That should be in within the next four to five weeks. It's, it, it started already. Uh, Again, we, we'll stock that, we'll fill that up. Exclusive thing, sort of things to the shop itself, well, I, I think we will be the only shop with a pole alley in Ireland. I think we will be the only bivvy city, if you like, or a little bivvy village where we will have numerous bivvies on display with all the furniture inside and outside. Um, our stock of rods is huge. I mean, we, we stock um, display over 100 rods at the moment and we're, we're going to grow that. Terminal tackle, nobody is even lighting a candle to the amount of terminal tackle that we're, we, we currently stock in, in Ireland. Um, we're, getting, we're, we're, we're starting to get a, a more loyal UK customer base, which is great for us because we always said that, you know, 
most anglers in Ireland, or a lot of anglers in Ireland, are going to the UK to buy the products. But to be seen in UK anglers coming to Ireland now and buying from us, so, I mean, we're doing something right, and you know, we're very, very proud of the whole, the whole setup and the way it's going. And just remember, it's still very, very young and very early days yet for MIA. My, my plans for next year's fishing. Well, I've already started my pike fishing season. Um, I started that last week, it was my first trip. I'll be, again, I'll be doing a lot of pike fishing now, right through to, to March. Hopefully get a few carp sessions in on the club water in between. The beauty of that water is there's pike in it as well, so you can actually have a rod over the pike and a you know, rod over the carp. The next year then, I have a few, I've always had a few little bucket lists, if you like, barbel. I have this mad urge to go and fish for barbel. So I plan to try and get over to the UK during the, during the new year to try and get that sorted. A few big chub, if, if all goes well. France is definitely on my list for next year. I want to go to France and see what the, the, the you know, the big, big waters I like to fish. And again, it, it's all experience and it's all learning curve. Following that then, I'd love to, my, sorry, my all time dream is to fish for big, big musky. But whether that'll happen next year or not, I don't know. But, if it doesn't, it'll definitely happen the year after.